Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen, excuse me, Select Board meeting. This is uh, Monday, the 1st of February. <clears throat> and uh, we're calling to order. And tonight we've got uh, a, just a few things on our agenda and hopefully we can make this reasonably quick so folks can get home and stay safe. <clears throat> it, is, it is snowing out there. Um, we've got our minutes. We have a uh, liquor violation hearing. And then we've got a discussion of the DLT, uh, excuse me, DLT uh, priorities. And then we have our COVID-19 update and then any select board and town administrator updates tonight. So <clears throat> without further ado, why don't we just do our minutes real quick um, from January 25th. Motion. All right, we have a second on the minutes. Second. Right. That was left hand second. <laughs> That's right. All those in favor? Scott, man. <laughs> I hypnotized by that cat's tail. <laughs> all right. All those in favor for the minutes of the 25th? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on that one. <laughs> all right. Now, next up, we're going to open our hearing for a liquor violation. <clears throat> We haven't done these in a, we haven't, it's been quite a while since we've had one of these. So <clears throat> I'll just kind of like quickly go over just like the hearing guidelines. Um, and then so we'll open our hearing at, uh, what is it? Seven, 635. <clears throat> so the general procedures for this is upon notice of the receipt of violations, we hold a public hearing, which is that tonight, and we send a notice that's sent by certified mail to the licensee at least 10 days prior to the hearing. And then upon conclusion of the hearing, the LLA, that would be us, deliberates and determines if a violation occurred. If satisfactory proof of violation, the LLA may consider the sentencing guidelines provided in the violation procedure. And then <clears throat> there's a first offense, a warning to seven day suspension, a second offense, a warning to 30 day suspension and a third offense, warning to revocation. <clears throat> and we have a couple of other check boxes here. The LLA may hold any licensee suspension in abeyance for a period of one or more years if the licensee agrees to execute a stipulation and consent order which would include a requirement of the licensee provided serve safe server training to all employees, or the suspension will not have to be served by the licensee if there are no further violations found by the LLA or the ABCC during the abeyance period. If the licensee is found by the LLA or the ABCC to have committed a violation during the, peri the abeyance period, the suspension held in abeyance shall be immediately take effect and be added to the discipline imposed for the subsequent offense or the offenses which have occurred within two years preceding the data violation shall be used in calculating the number of offenses for purposes of the sentencing guidelines. And we don't have anything within the prior two years, right, Jeff? We talked about that. Um, also, the LLA may use its dis discretion in determining whether the violations warrant a penalty more lenient or severe than suggested by the guidelines. And then finally, the LLA's authority to consider alternative dispositions or further conditions on a license shall not be limited by the guidelines set forth in the town of Sunderland alcohol license violation procedures. All right, so I think first, why don't I turn it over to the chief to um, discuss the violation. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so I had sent a uh, notification to the town administrator back in December, um, I informed him that uh, since I've been here, um, since 2016, we as a department have enjoyed a um, very good relationship with a lot of the area towns and state police, one of them being the Deerfield Police Department. Um, Deerfield has one of their employees, Sergeant Brian Ravish, uh, who and I, I and, and he have worked together on conducting various alcohol uh, stings, if you will. Basically, it's an attempt to to test the uh, the process to make sure everybody is identifying everyone that needs to be identified to buy alcohol. Um, <clears throat> in one instance, uh, back in December, uh, Sergeant Ravers was uh, conducting one of those alcohol enforcement actions and had a male party under 21 under his guidance 
go into the uh, various stores within Sunderland. At this one time, he walked into the Sunderland Shell gas station to purchase uh, alcohol. Uh, when he was there, he walked to the, uh, to the back where the coolers were, <clears throat> selected a 12 pack of beer, and then approached the counter, placing the 12 pack onto the counter. Uh, the male then took a $20 bill out of his pocket to purchase the alcohol um, after he was advised of the price. Sergeant Ravers then witnessed through the window that the young man never presented his signed Massachusetts driver's license to the clerk. And when the young male exited, Sergeant Ravers had asked him if the clerk had asked him for an ID. The young male stated that the clerk did not ask him for an ID. The 12 pack of, of, of beer was then taken by the sergeant um, because obviously he's not gonna let him keep it. Uh, and then went in to speak with the clerk regarding uh, the sale of alcohol. Uh, he did speak with the clerk and the clerk um, did not ask him for an ID. And then Sergeant Ravish notified me of the violation uh, that uh, within the next, that day and then the next day we spoke about it. Uh, I then notified Jeff regarding the violation and wanted to bring it to the board because we have to follow through with uh, any violations that we get. Right, okay. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, the, the attorney present that would you like to speak on your client's uh, behalf? Yeah. Uh, yes, I would. Uh, if I may first just say, I thank you and the uh, select board for agreeing to, to continue this matter from January 19th. I had a uh, scheduling problem and now we're at the hearing, but I just wanted to say that I do uh, okay. appreciate the, that it's continued to today. Uh, I would like to give an overview here. Mr. Tasmin, who is the uh, manager owner of the uh, Sunderland Shell Mart, uh, also has, of course, a, a detailed uh, description of the of the events. Uh, as it's been recited by the or stated by the sergeant, that is an accurate description. Uh, there are some mitigating factors which I can bring to the uh, board's attention for this hearing is also Mr. Tasmin would, would have in more d detail. But my understanding is I visited the store myself. I've talked to Mr. Tasmin a number of times since this matter was brought to my attention to represent him in this matter. Uh, my understanding is there have been this, at one time used to be, I think a 7-Eleven station, 7-Eleven store. It has been uh, privately owned for several years now. And as it's been stated, there have been no violations as under the Sutherland cell, Shell or Sutherland Golf uh, Station uh, since Mr. Tasmin has been operating the store. Uh, the clerk who was on duty the night of this incident, uh, and Mr. Tasmin could speak further to it, but I can give an overview, apparently was uh, not feeling well. He was a, a clerk at one of the other, another store that Mr. Tasmin uh, operates and he was sort of a substitute clerk. He was not feeling well, and he had clearly made a mistake in how he uh, handled that transaction, but it was a one and only in an isolated event, and uh, Mr. Tasmin has obviously spoken to that particular clerk if he ever does substitute duty or anyone else who works in the store, that this is and there is no uh, alternative to asking for the necessary identification with a mass driver's license or that's what they have a mass driver's license and i would uh, ask that uh, when the board deliberates upon this uh, violation that it would be uh, as lenient as would be consistent with the uh, fairness and justice it is a isolated event and needless to say when someone is faced with something like this it brings them right to attention of what they have to even take uh, more stringent measures to make sure it never happens again. But that, that's my overview. Mm -hmm. And I also could have Mr. Tasmin give a little more detail because he obviously knows every fact in, in this matter. And I would ask okay. if Mr. Tasmin hears if he did want to speak. Hello, good evening, everybody. Oh. Can I talk? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Good evening. My name is Atif Sneem, and I'm the owner of the 
special guest station. I'm very sorry about the happen in the December and I watched the camera and I passed it by employee too. Actually my employee who was working that day, he mostly worked in my Amherst too, you know. And uh, we had some problems shot at employee that day and I put him over there and he's not he wasn't feeling good that day. Even mostly we closed store eight o'clock and he called me, he said he's not, he not feeling good, you know, because few weeks before Amherst store the same Michael called ambulance there too, you know. He was in fact, he had some diabetes problem or blood pressure problem. And uh, I thought okay, he's not feeling good. I called him to close store early. And that day, mostly we would close store every day, eight o'clock. And that day we store closing at seven o'clock. And even he turned off the light outside the store gas station. And then the, somebody walked inside the store and he was closing everything. And it happened too quick. He didn't ask for ID. That's what happened. And if you would like, you can ask the police officer. The store was the outside light was closed. And when the police officer came, he explained him to okay, I'm in the closing the store, you know. And that's why this could happen, you know. Otherwise, my employee is very good. I have multiple town different stores, beer and wine lessons too. We never have happened before this one. And after that happened, I did very strictly to tell everybody check ID. Anybody under 40, 50 year old, check their ID. And they're doing very, very carefully. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little. All right. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to the board for deliberation. I think I can see you talking, Tom, but I can't hear you. No? Still not there, weird. Tom. Yeah. And I know, I know you're not on mute because I saw you flip the mute on and off. That's weird. And you might be trying to dial in for the audio. Yeah, let's just give him a moment. So while that's going on, if I could, Mr. Chair, Chief, Please. this is a this is a first violation in in uh, your tenure here for this location. <clears throat> uh, yes, yes so far I know this is, for my knowledge, I never had problem with the with the beer and wine store. You know, my family used to own it as a Seven Eleven. With my brother used to take at the store, and the last is almost five six years I'm taking the store, and it never happened with me any like that. Okay, well thank you, thank you for that. And just following up with the chief of police, and and that's uh, that's the case, and and it's been it's been a, a well run operation in the on the alcohol side. Yes, we haven't received any complaints and we haven't had any violations in the, the four years I've been here. We've been working on doing the uh, alcohol compliance checks and uh, we've been, I've been very happy with the fact that we have not had any violations. So this was the first one. Excellent. Thank you. And, and thank you both the uh, uh, representative council and uh, the owner for, for coming tonight. I do appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I think that's the good thing about doing this over Zoom tonight. You don't have to drive in during the weather, so. <laughs> Still a public record. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Works either way. So if I could ask one more uh, question, Mr. Chair. Chief, uh, characterizing our uh, retail establishments, we don't have, even though our, our population um, ebbs and flows and we have a lot of uh, college population, we historically don't have a large um, a problem with uh, retailers in town. Can I characterize that correctly? Oh. Are, are you asking about the, the full liquor license places? The, the general retail. We, we don't really have a problem with, we have historically not had problems with retailers uh, on the uh, alcohol side. 
Yeah, from, from what I gather, I don't believe we've had any issues. Uh, I can only speak for the, the past four years. And uh, I know that we were doing the compliance checks and it's for any of the places that can sell alcohol. And uh, like I said, this is the first one that we've had. Great, thanks Chief. Well, I yes. want to put that in context, Mr. Chair, because you know, there's, there's a, a fair amount of um, rental properties in town. We have, right. we, have some, we have some college students in town. And I think it's important to have in the record that we have responsible uh, retailers in town, in that environment. Right, I think Jeff and I were looking at before we came in and there was only one violation that we're even aware of. So great. That was under prior ownership, so. Great. Yep. Tom, are you up? Yeah. Hey, there so, we go. So, so my, my question is, when, when the last time that we had some, we had violations, I thought I was under the impression that um, our, our, our people were using software so that when someone came in to buy or the cash registers, when they came in, that they actually had to enter the date of the person's license for the transaction to go through. And, and I, I was wondering, you, you know, I, I understand and, and I'm, I'm trying not to be over. There, there's a lot of reasons that that led to the sale um, to the to the uh, person that was underage. But my, my question is, every single one of us that has ever worked behind the counter can tell you that there's good days and there's bad days. But True. but when when if if my livelihood depended upon. Um, someone that has good days and bad days, I, I, I would want to know what what are you doing now to prevent, besides if you're talking, you know, some, you're talking to them, what kind of safeguards are you putting in place to ensure that it doesn't happen again in the future? Such as having software in the cash register that would only allow the sale if you put in the date on the ID. Have, have you looked, ha, ha, has the license holder looked at that? Actually, I can imagine we do have our system in the computer. If somebody buys even tobacco uh, or cigarette or beer or wine, we, we sell beer and wine. We mm -hmm. know sell a full liquor in our store. And when you enter the beer or wine, the sale inside, the screen pop up with the date of birth. You have to put the date of birth manually inside. But uh, luckily, the and luckily there's one button in the corner, they say exit, you know. And sometimes an employee does the day quick say, like, they, like he was closing that day, he put the exit button, you know. There is, if somebody buy any cigarette, tobacco, alcohol, we have system. First, when we enter the price inside, the screen pop up their date of birth, and then they show the date of the today and like 2000 before somebody is 21. And when you check manually ID or you put a date of birth put inside, you have both options there. But there is other option you can just say, okay, you don't have to put it, you know. So okay. if, if I could ask for clarification, so are you saying like the point of sale system allows you to do that? Was it overridden and turned off? Is that what you're saying for all the transactions yes. or just that one transaction? No, no, anybody buy, even, even a 60 year old buy, somebody come buy cigarettes, Yep. tobacco or beer or wine when we put uh, like price like for example five dollars and beer or cigarette when we hit this key and then the screen pop and they say on the top make sure this that this person is uh, over the 21 and they yep. say the date they like today date like for example uh, today is uh, uh, february 1st 2000 before prior and then they have option underneath you can put there like month zero two, zero three or ninety eight, something like that too. Yeah, and then the in the bottom they have green button. Like if somebody like mostly fifty six year old, we just click the green button, you know, and then we don't have to check ID, you know. We know the person is like fifty year old or sixty year old, you know. That's why. Okay, That's so what it, happened. Okay, so it was overridden at the time of the sale then. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 
and 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 I guess that that's that's my point. I, I mean, you know, you're you're depending on a clerk maintaining your license, and that's your livelihood. I I, I get it. I, I mean, it it happens, but I I would try to I would try if. I mean, just just so I mean, we have a policy. We have a policy on on, on how to handle, and, and we set that for a reason. So there's there's an expectation. There's an expect you know through our policy. There's an expectation, um, and we're and we try to be consistent. Um, that that being said, um, I would I would say to the chief that I would I would hope that I don't. Personally, I don't believe it was an isolated case. Um, it's just it, it it it's it's happening. Students are back. Um, I I work at the university, and I'll tell you what I don't know if somebody I talked to was eighteen or or twenty twenty one. I I can't tell. I I really can't. Um, so I I would I would I would I would recommend that you strengthen your your policy. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to hear, you know, future, if you have strength in your policy. And at the same time, we'll just, I'm just gonna let you know that my next conversation with the chief, I'm gonna ask for a, a more, more um, um, for, for these checks to occur much more often. Just so you know that chief will probably be doing it much more often and and you should have some something in place that would help prevent um, this happening again, because a second second time is a little, little I mean, it's much more, much more severe to what we usually do. So thank you, David. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Yes. So I think it's important to piggyback on what Tom was saying in that these um, uh, annual license issues, issuances to businesses from the board's perspective have historically been not necessarily exclusive to commerce, but we look at liquor and tobacco licensing in, in particular retail as a function of, of public safety. Any kind of that underage element is crossing that line from a business transaction to an element of public safety. Not unlike a restaurant or a place that is a full liquor on site uh, over serving. That's a public safety discussion. And this board has been pretty consistent about that perspective. And oftentimes that perspective gets lost. I think the business owners have to bear in mind that coming in front of the board after a violation, the threat of losing a license uh, or having one suspended or losing one indefinitely is a business consequence, but every single day, the board sees this as a public safety problem. And we wanna ensure that that public safety element, that trust that is <coughs> granted from the town and its representatives to the businesses is reflected in their actions. And getting stung is not being a good reflection in uh, the business owner's ac actions. So that said, I, I, I wanna put that public safe. We talk about COVID like to death, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we also talk about seat belts and speeding and traffic lights and all that. Well, alcohol licenses are part of that mix. It's a public safety that it's a trust that we're bestowing to business owners. And we expect that trust to be upheld. That's a, that's a very valid, uh, good point and reminder, because we don't really talk about it. You're right. We haven't talked about that that often just because it doesn't come up. Right. That's a reflection of the good business owners. Yep, and and that, that shouldn't go lost in this discussion. Um, I just had kind of one follow up to a point that Tom was making. Are you able to get a report of how many times that override key is hidden in during sale, sales, essentially? That's fair. Because um, no, that might be something no. that you might want to follow up. So you can't find that out. Okay. No. Because <sighs> that might be a good data point to have. Um, you might want to, next time if you talk to your point of sale vendor and they're asking about enhancements, that might be something you want to recommend. No, <sighs> mostly uh, after that, I talk very strictly with my all employees. Even my other town, other stores, I talk with everybody strictly. Please ID, check ID everyone. 
everyone under look you 40 50 year old check id even i make a small note on the register too with a hand like please check id please check id you know yeah. and always i go in the store every day i talk to them even i watch them sometimes in the camera too if i'm sitting in the office if somebody came to me in the 40 50 year old if they did not check i go right away walk up on the front of the counter and check i you know ask them and tell them you have to check id everybody even they say this is our regular customer we know them you know but i still have to check id you know so in the in the end kind of like what scott was alluding to essentially it's your reputation as a as a business that's on the line there you know if something does happen so <clears throat> all right <clears throat> Um, did you have any other further comments, Chief, at all? No, I, I, I went through the uh, basic part of the report. I just want, like I said, wanted to make sure that the, uh, the board was aware of it and that we uh, have and we will continue to conduct more alcohol compliance checks. Yep, especially you... with the students back and everything. It's appreciated. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so I guess we're going to get to our deliberation portion of the uh, the hearing. <clears throat> um, do we have a consensus at all, or a suggestion on the consensus here, as far as? So, David, you want to you want to uh, review what our policy is? Yep. Let's see. Hold on. I've got the procedure section here. Let's see, hold on one second. Then we've got a note on here under the, the, uh, the first, second, and third offenses. <clears throat> the first offense is a warning to a seven day suspension. The second offense would be a warning to a 30 day suspension. And the third or subsequent offense would be a warning to a revocation. There's a note here, any license suspension issued by the LLA may be held in abeyance for a period of one or more years if the licensee admits to the alleged violation at the hearing and executes a stipulation and consent order, which shall include a requirement that the licensee provide all employees with serve safe server training. The licensee shall not be required to serve the suspension if there are no further violations found by the LLA or the AVCC during the abeyance period. If the LLA or the ABCC after a hearing finds that the licensee has committed a violation during the abeyance period, the suspension being held in abeyance shall take effect and be added to any disciplinary discipline, excuse me, issued for the subsequent offense. And then only offenses that have occurred within the two years preceding the date of the violation shall be used in calculating the number of offenses for the purpose of the sentencing guidelines. And as we discussed, we didn't have any other ones within the past two years. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to uh, put on the table for discussion mm -hmm. the issue of three-day suspension of license held in abeyance for uh, one year. Okay. I'll second for discussion. All right. <clears throat> so, Tom, are you suggesting a uh, three day in abeyance and that is automatically triggered in the event of another violation? That's correct, Scott. Yes. That, that, that would be in addition to whatever the penalty is for the next, if the next, uh, a second violation or a second violation or violation. Right. Sometimes. Sometimes it gets lost, but right. I, uh, I would I would say a three day suspension, um, and that we hold it in advance for uh, the period of time specified in our uh, um, policies. So you're suggesting uh, the abeyance is held for a year, a calendar year, Tom? Yes, correct. I think it's important to bear in mind, in particular counsel who may be listening, that that second offense is an automatic trigger and then the second hearing. I understand that. Great. Thank you. And, and, and the other thing, and, and Scott, thank you for saying that, because the other thing is uh, we, we've had we've had uh, owners in the past try to negotiate days of uh enforcement a week exactly yeah um 
but it, yeah. it's our choice. And, 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 and typically a lot of times it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So. Right. That is true. And I see the chief shaking his head. So right, you're right. <laughs> it's not yeah, a topic well, for discussion. Or and that is we, 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 I mean, we, we, end, we end up with these big, these in the past and, and fortunately we, we've been, we've been we've been very uh fortunate not to have had these meetings i i th this is where there there's two things selectmen don't like boards don't like doing or, or there's a couple but the biggest two are liquor violations tobacco violations and dog dog complaints dog so, <laughs> you'd be correct about those, that yes dog so those, those, those three are no those three are no win but i think mr bergeron made a point very he, he's very eloquent when he talked about the the safety and, and and you think about it there's someone an underage individual bought a 12 pack of beer and he went out to his car or truck um and and unfortunately there's no guarantee that that you know if you're in a restaurant or or a, or or a bar which none of us have been in for a long time Right. But, but if you, but if you, but if you go to a restaurant or a bar, at least you, there's a, there's an opportunity that someone's watching how, what, how much is being consumed. Right. But when you check that, on you. when you take that 12 pack to the car um, or truck or vehicle, whatever um, there is no, there is nobody watching. Um, and, and you're on the road and, and, and you may that, that 12 pack may just have a temptation that you want to, Make it eleven pack. So, I mean, we've all we've all been there. We've seen it happen. Yeah. So, I mean, it it's it's it is a concern. It's it, it's a very big concern of ours. And and safety is it, You know, there there are there are some that are very concerned. We're very we take very serious. There's many things, and one is our responsibility for public safety. So, it's one of the key aspects of the job. Yeah, it is. So that's my that's my motion, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. And uh, you seconded, Scott? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> right hand. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So all those in favor of a three-day suspension held in abeyance for one year. <clears throat> Aye. Aye. And um, that's three to zero on that. Uh, and and uh, to sort of follow up on your comment, Scott, uh, it's the, the second offense, in addition to that, it can range from the low of a warning to up to 30 days suspension. So um, bear that in mind. And, uh, <clears throat> and again, Mr. Chair, a reminder that with this vote, a single offense inside the calendar year is an automatic suspension. Exactly. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. And Chief, I had actually had a question too when we were talking about negotiating days. What day of the week was the uh, offense? On. Do we know? So, uh, yeah, so let me look at the calendar to see what day that was. Thank you. So, Sergeant Ravish informed me um, on his letter that I gave to uh, Jeff regarding the complaint mm -hmm. and um, the violation occurred shortly around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, December 9th. Wednesday. Okay, all right, thank you. Just kind of tucking that away in the back of my head for <clears throat> reference, okay. All right, thank you. All Any right. questions from council or the manager, Mr. Chair? I see Jeff's hand went up. Uh, I, yeah, I was just gonna say. Sorry. No, that's all right. Yeah, because I wanted to check with them before we close the hearing. Jeff, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to follow up say that um, I will be sending out uh, the stipulation and consent order as voted on, and um, then it'll be uh, up to the manager and the attorney to decide if they want to voluntarily agree to that. Um, okay. Yep. Understanding that, and my impression from from the select board is that if they don't agree, then then it would be a three day suspension to be served. Um, once we get that information. Is that correct. correct. All right. 
Okay. Um, did, did either of you gentlemen have any questions or comments before we close the hearing? Uh, Attorney John Pearson speak. No, I don't. And I uh, thank the board for your uh, consideration, deliberation and decision. And I will follow up with Mr. Tasmeen when we get that uh, written order. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, counsel. Appreciate it. And thank hopefully you. we won't be back here to discuss this again. I, I agree. All right. That, and then with that, uh, I'd like to close the hearing at uh, 7.09 p.m. <clears throat> so I had to convert on my phones in 24 hour time. So I have to convert it back for folks who aren't on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice. All right. Thank you. And thanks for uh, Chief for coming. Appreciate it. Oh, definitely. Anytime. All right. <clears throat> Could I ask Mr. Chair a follow up uh, to the yes. policy that we have in hand? I see that it's dated last amended reviewed in 2007. And Ooh, I ask no. that Jeff take a look at it to see if there has been any relevant changes in uh, current practice. Uh, and the fact that, you know, if there's something as simple as a spelling mistake, it can be looked at uh, as being updated. Yep. It's Good thorough, point. I get it, but it said 2007. Yep. And actually, if you get an input too, Chief, you know, if you get a chance, yeah. take a look at it and see, yeah, because time flies pretty quickly. The laws are always changing. They are. That is true. All right. <clears throat> so thanks for that. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> um, now, our next uh, and final like regular new business item is a discussion of DLTA priorities. We do this uh, once a year around this time. So Jeff, what uh, what have we got for that tonight? So the state once again provided um, district local technical assistance to regional planning agencies. Um, BERCOG got their uh, their distribution, and uh, last week I think sent out the request for communities to prioritize. Um, any anything that, that the town is interested in and then specifically listing out the top three priorities. Um, and I don't know if you want to go through the entire list or I, I had some thoughts that it, uh, of, of things that in my, um, you know, looking through this and discussions with others, I thought would be uh, things to check off and then um, potential priorities. Okay, sure. Um, do you want to bring it up so we can look at it? Is that, will that help? Uh, yes, I, I did a, a memo of what I was thinking and then also the application, which would you like to see the entire application? Uh, why don't we bring up the list? Okay. And then, then we can talk about it. <clears throat> This. There you go. Yep. Okay. okay. And the U with the umlaut is that? Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. Was that the supposed to be a <laughs> version? It looks like a nice red check mark. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of had a hunch. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chair, this is a handful of pages. I have my own version pulled up. They are okay. really red check marks, Jeff. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I figured something went awry there. So by, by category. Yep. Kind of lump one in categories. Energy and environment. And maybe it's best just to go through them, each one. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Because um, we've only got check marks in there. Do they do they require a, no, a priority number? I would imagine the end, right? Yeah, and the, at the very end, your municipality's top three right. choices. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so you can check up more than three, but those you know, essentially these are our top three. Right. Correct. Right. Oh. Okay. So oh, I, I I think, Mr. Chair, um, just just to throw it out there that that we probably have there. There, to me, there's two things that probably stand tall. Yep. The first is the first is that our housing plan um, 
ends this year. Yep. And, the, and, and, and the other one is the, um, what we're trying to do over the senior center with Deerfield and um, Whiteley is to try to do an assessment, a needs assessment on, on the building and the programs. Right. So Deerfield and Whiteley have prioritized that as their number one need. So um, I, I don't, I, and I talked to Jeff about this briefly. Last year, we were just able to get our number one choice. Um, right. I, last year, Jeff, that was it, right? Um, so I, I, I don't know how, how we, I, I don't know how we proceed. I, I, I would, I would say the, the, the senior, uh, the senior center, um, is a regional, is a regional, um, and I, I would think maybe that wouldn't be, you know, that would only count like maybe one third, Jeff, maybe not the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would, I would throw, I would throw my vote to that. And then uh, the housing number one, number two. So if I could, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. So Tom, as you talk about the shared senior services, if, if Waitley and Deerfield have already tagged that as their number one, uh, this is a shared question uh, to everyone. Does that help um, unify the vote and maybe solidify the funding for that? Is that your sense? Clearly, there's a need. I, I understand that, but that, that, that's what we're thinking, and that's what the the FERCOG's thinking also. Okay, so we get a little more bang for the buck in that sense, right? So I I can I can get behind the shared senior services because you know it's not just the senior center. If you think about shared senior services and you expand that to the disconnect that we have with the FRTA and the PVTA and our, you know, our, our, uh, our, uh, our, our line where buses can never cross or our specific ride share services, that's an element that may be more than a facility. I wouldn't want this to just become a review of the facility, Tom. I think that's important no. to bear in mind as well. Well, right. uh, you know, <laughs> It's 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 a very interesting concept that we could have we can have our our residents call for a van to take them to a doctor's appointment in Springfield Main Street in Springfield, but we can't get them on a van to a doctor in Greenfield. Yeah, yeah. Maginot line is the thing I was, I was stuck in my head. So, uh, yeah, there seems to be this weird Maginot line in transportation. It makes no sense. Yep, I yeah. would agree with that. If only it was it, a unified transportation mm, system or network throughout the yeah. valley. Well, there's yeah, a very I'm much just, territory to cross there. Yeah, there is. So, I, I would say that I, I, that's a good point. And I know that we've talked about that. And, and I think when Jeff, if, when Jeff writes his thing, if he talks to Casey and Brian Deerfield and uh, Deerfield and Whiteley's town administrator, I, I think that we could reemphasize that point as well, Scott. But yeah. it, it's on their concern also because we've been we've been hamstrung about how how to expand services because of the transportation. Correct. And well, in the current environment, if I could, uh, Mr. Chair and Tom, yeah. in the current environment, delivery of medical services, in particular in the case of vaccination or, uh, you know, again, vaccinations, you know, wh where, what does that system look like in the future? It's a good well, point. well, not, not only that, Mr. Mr. Chair and Scott, but um, I, I also have been in conversation with the, uh, the president of GCC and the president of GCC, Dr. De Ease, um, she also recognized Sunderland has, has, as many affordable housing units available, and and a lot of those housing dwelling units are 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 occupied by students that utilize GCC. Well, how how can they go from GC from Sunderland to Greenfield to sure. participate in the classes? Yep, and it's very very difficult. So so she as well is is of concern about the Maginot line 
that that's out there. I like that um, because it does. It seems like at the Sunderland Bridge, there's this uh, there's this uh, these spikes in the road that that keeps our buses. They can go one way, but they can't go the other. So, right. um, so it's, it's just not for seniors. It's just not for healthcare, but it's for a, a large part of our population. You know, yeah. uh, that can't that we can't get the greenfield. So, right. Transportation networks are very important for economic development and Good prosperity. Point. So, you can you can get on a train to New York City, but you can't get on a bus to Greenfield. The irony. So I'm I'm hearing consensus centered around having that be our number one, right? Yep. And I'm reading the thing too because the way it's labeled, shared senior services, and you've got senior centers, senior housing, and an option to write in a third. But what I like is it discusses the center as one of them. We could put right. transportation in for the other. And it also adds an extra um, underline because of the senior housing category for our next one, which would be the housing plan, which you kind of tie into, you know, to um, yep. North Main and everything. Yep. 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 So in, in that context, Mr. Chair, the housing planning and implementation, of course, our own housing plan, which is in its second uh, certified iteration is sunsetting here. And the last housing production plan uh, has elements that could still be acted on today. Many elements have been acted on and that's a good thing. It identifies in the plan People hear the word plan and they think, oh, we're going to like, you know, dig up the dirt and build stuff. Well, yeah. no, first you have to understand what the need is exactly. and where the capacity is. And once that capacity is identified, then you can actually move forward with maybe how long, how many years? 10 years to dig up the dirt in 120? Yeah. So anyway, I think production planning is important and having a production plan to work off of uh, and re basically uh, renew, review and renew uh, is a good second housing, a uh, second uh, step for this DLTA round. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's no different than a business plan. You know, you may think, oh, I'd like to put, you know, right. a coffee shop here, but have you done the homework to find out, you know, is it really gonna work? You're in a whole yep. neighborhood of teetotalers. They hate coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. The teetotaler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <clears throat> and then um, I think our third one was culverts, right? Was that the one that we had kind of had earmarked? So, Mr. Chair, if I could. Yeah. I look at the culverts assessment, and Jeff, and I appreciate the fact that it's got on my screen a red check and a, you know, a, a U with. Uh, uh, hieroglyph over the top of it on the big screen, but under energy environment, could I ask for some discussion around regional water supply? Yeah. You know, we, we talk a lot about uh, resilience and infrastructure and resilience, but in the end, uh, we actually have, uh, outside of individual wells, a single source of water uh, a regional water supply study, one of the byproducts of the 120, no, I'm sorry, of the 116, what well, used to be Sugar Bush and is now 116 North. Uh, one element of that was developers uh, really, really were honed in on uh, basically a privately operated regional water supply system there happy to punch in wells and sell it to whoever the highest bidder is, whether it's our water district or whether it's UMass. Yep. That said, or the town of Amherst or the town of Hadley or whatever, if, if there's enough interest from the private sector in a regional water supply study, all of the integrations associated, Tom, and I, I get it, East Hampton and South Hampton just tied their systems together at great expense. A regional water supply study Maybe something that is really strategic. Well, that's a good idea, especially from a security and you know and safety Correct. standpoint too. And it, it offers, you know, any given town that's part of it a backup if something happens. Again, I put that forward for discussion, Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh. It, it it it's it's interesting connecting. Um, 
um, public water sources. Um, and it's not actually, it's not easily done right. um, by, by the state. Um, I, I know, I know um, it's, it's possible, um, but you, people, you have to start looking at the hydraulic, uh, hydraulic gradients of the different communities. You know, some people, you know, some, some places may on 80 pounds, some places may be on 60 pounds, some places may be on 150 pounds systems. So, but, you know, Scott, I, I, I think um, it's a, it's a point well taken. And, and I, I, I would agree with you that there's not, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong taking a look at the uh, regional water and, and how, how we enter, how we interconnect um, and work with the, uh, the water district with that as well. Absolutely. Uh, I say that, Tom, I brought this forward in the backdrop of uh, what's been a 10 year process between East Hampton and South Hampton and their interconnections went on and people may know, may know I, I was born and raised in, I was raised in South Hampton and anyway, that's kind of like the center of my, my other universe. That said, um, it took a decade and a lot of planning and money. And the interconnection was completed at a time when Southampton was Southampton, the town's water distribution system was at a critical low. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. And I think the culvert is what they have under the culvert assessment stuff. Honestly, we could probably squeeze that in somehow on our side and maybe with some assistance, you know, I, I still think it's okay. It's okay to keep it keep it prioritized, David. I, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. I, I I don't think that's a problem. I I just think that you're just you're just at you're just adding you're just adding another thing to our list, which, which is good. I think. Yep. Yep. I would agree. I mean, in a way, we could probably assign numbers to all these items. Really, you know, some being less and more important, but still. Yep. <laughs> So we'll make the regional water supplier number three, and then maybe culverts four. Um, you know, if, if I could, Mr. Chair, hmm. the regional water supply, I'd like to have, I would suggest we have on there. Again, it's very strategic. There may be some tactical elements of culvert survey. If we can actually get a culvert survey, get it on the capital plan, get it uh, as part of uh, any road upgrades, kind of get some guidance around it. That's been a, that's been a, a piece of that's been a burn our saddle for a little time. So if there's it a way been. of collecting that data and putting it all together, I think that would my feeling is that would be a higher priority in the short year. But that regional water supply is something again that's very strategic and may take a couple of different applications of DLTA. But I wanted right. to have that discussion tonight. Yeah, it is it is a longer term, bigger scale right. project in that uh, you know i think the um culvert assessment would make a lovely graduate project i think you know it kind of has that written all over it so maybe we can talk about that okay jeff uh, there is community compact funds for regionalization so if it's if it's on our list, we can look at other sources and, and start talking to other communities and see who's interested and possibly um, do more than, than yep. or, or something other than DLTA. Okay. That. Yeah, and I, I think, especially with this too, it's kind of good to have shorter and longer term goal items on there because, you know, right. I mean, some of them are going to take years to accomplish. So it never feels like years, though, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that is true. Well, it the, the big thing is not to get overloaded, you know. Yes, right. It, it happens. It just takes a time, and and you just you lay it out there, and and one step. And and Scott, you made a very good point about one twenty. I mean, one twenty started with with a conversation with the old owner, which said, "Would you even consider selling to the town?" Because once you start. I mean, if you want to review, revisit that, once you start going to buy, the town's going to buy it, all of a sudden you take, you took a short process. You just made it into a lengthy process. So 
Right. Um, True. So, I mean, so you have to go way back to for that first conversation and, and, and it does, it does. Nothing happens quick unless you've got a school roof that falls down. And yeah. then you can quick. That's a little different. You have to have a vision and you have to stick to the, to the commitment of that vision and it can take a while. But that, but that's, again, that's why, that's why it's good to have a plan. Why putting these together, this like this together, it's, it's a very important, very important process. Yep. We revisit this one each year, which is good. In, in the mm -hmm. event, if I could, Mr. Chair, in the event yeah. the housing planning and implementation technical assistance actually goes on and we re-up the housing plan, it's going to be interesting to see how the needs survey has changed over the 15 years that this housing plan has been, been initiated and then re-upped. Because I remember our housing stock has largely been rental, is now being augmented by rental, Yep. And the driving force was in many ways to have a defense against 40B. That said, I'm interested to see if this happens to be the one that is, is a, a area of focus. I'm interested to see what the housing needs change, right? It, I, I can't with a straight face think that short-term rental housing is still going to be a need after 15 years of our focus on generating essentially rental housing. Yep. But I could be surprised. Lord knows I've been surprised in the past. Oh, that's a good point. And especially when you look at like, when I think too of um, housing needs, you know, you think of affordable first time home buy yep. buyers, whether it's a condo or a, or a um, detached house, you look at how, even in the last several years, how much the market has skyrocketed. Right. Um, and that has a huge effect on, you know, folks wanting to start out to buy a home. Right. So, and that's so, a lack of inventory and it's also, it's a, you know, it's, it's a myriad of things. Right. It's not, there, there's no simple, quick answers or solutions because it is, a, there's a lot of complex factors at work, but yep, that's an excellent point. Thank All you. right. So, so um, I, I make a, I make a, a motion to have these as, as discussed tonight. The priorities uh, set forward to submit uh, to COG for a DLTA. Okay. Good. Of a uh, Jeff, yes. Second. Uh, that there there was also a request to check out. We hadn't talked about vaccination planning, delivery, and review. Um, I you know, I think I think we have a SEPT plan already, and if the SEPT plan needs to be updated, then my feeling is I get it. Vaccination planning, delivery, and review is is a hot topic right now. It's well, kind of like it's kind of like GameStop. Well, <laughs> if before before this meeting, I was on another meeting, and we were talking we were talking about this thing, Scott. We have eight plans, right? Yeah, uh, it, I, I'm 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 sorry, and, and I'm, I'm but we have eight plans between Sunderland, Whateley, Deerfield, Conway. We have eight plans that we can roll out that are written that we can roll into tomorrow. Correct. You know, um, un unfortunately, and and I'll I'll follow up when we talk about it in a short time, but we we can do it. And we have done it. So the reason I raised the point, Tom. Yeah. Well, yeah. Scott, you know, and, and again, right? Typically when we when we run a flu vaccination EDS site, we do between four and five hundred vaccinations a day. Right. That but the COVID would be a little bit slower because there's a mandatory a waiting and, period. It's, it's a more it's more people intensive because you need more people to you need you know besides the greeters you need people because everybody has to wait between 15 minutes and 30 minutes depending on what what their paths are and you had um a more there's more supplies that are needed etc but i i mean we have run we have run eds's so we can do it Right, your overall plan is the same. You got some different details, but you're right. Oh, 
There's a little bit more detail, but we can do it. We can absolutely do it. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Does that, does that cover your comment, Jeff, you think? Uh, yeah, and I guess my understanding was that, that there was a, a request from the uh, Frontier EDS group that not, not necessarily prioritize this, but to check it off as one of the things that we're interested in to help support um, yeah, that's what fine. the COG does yeah. for the region. So that We can leave it checked. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, think that was fine. the only thing that we didn't. Oh, and electric vehicle charging station implementation. Um, yeah. I know the energy committee is looking at that. And again, it wasn't necessarily going to be a priority, but. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Have those as have those as four and five. Yeah. So just to confirm, it's um, we have one, two, three, four. <laughs> we have. Uh, senior center, uh, senior needs assessment, housing plan, um, culvert, and um, the regional water supply. Yep. Okay. All right, as priorities. priorities. Yep, exactly. Thank you. All right, great. All right, all those in favor of the list as stated? Aye. Aye. Was that an aye, Tom? I was motion and okay. voting. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't see because because we've got the presentation up, so I don't have you. You're not one of the. You're below the chief apparently on there. So yeah. <laughs> All oh, right. Thank you. Right <laughs> Only in Zoom's order, not in ours. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Um, and that's actually a nice segue into our next update uh, on our weekly COVID update, which uh, I, it seems like we have some slightly better news. That was Laurie out there tonight, or. Uh, there she is. I'm sorry. I was looking down in the bottom corner in my <laughs> Hollywood Square layout here. Nope, I'm here. Right. And yes, we do have much better news this week. Hey. Um, since last meeting, Monday, we um, have nine positive cases in town. And I think for our two week period reporting, based on what I have for data, we'll have 13, but um, I don't think I have last week's data accurate. So it might be one or two more than 13 which would be even with where we are now in the green. Hey, how about is that, that? Is that state data? I am getting data from both. Um, I think I'm getting data from the same thing, Maven, but Cheryl Volpe looks at it one way and Caitlin Rock looks at it a different way. Got it. Um, so, but I'm getting it from both of them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and I think from what I saw, there was only three maybe four tied to UMass, right? I think out of all those, at yes. least the last item I saw. Okay. Three. Three, yes. yeah, okay. Yep. <clears throat> all right. And um, we do have one tied to the elementary school. Yes, um, that's and right. And we've done some contact tracing for that. And so far, everything has come up negative as um, far as testing the people good. who were directly exposed that tested negative. Okay, good. Excellent. <clears throat> that's good news. Yes. Keith right. or Greg, you got any concerns about that? Nope, just taking notes right now. Uh, I, know I think uh, Ben did um, some contact and mitigation on the, um, the one case in school, so I don't think there'd be any spread. Okay. Great. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair. No, no, it's all right. <clears throat> so, so um, Mr. Chair, do you want me to fill you in what the meeting was before this? Yes, please, because that was a COVID-related meeting, so go for it. It, 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 was, it was basically the three towns getting together um, with, with uh, we, we have a IC um, management team in place, or in the IC, what they call the incident commander, for the vaccination site for our area is Tracy Rogers. You probably mm -hmm. knew that, Lori, right? Trace Tracy yeah. Rogers, Tracy Rogers is our I is our IC. Um, also, she was in on the meeting. Um, Christina from the C senior center was there, um, the, and there is a, a selectman from Whiteley, selectman board of health member from. Um, Whiteley and Deerfield, the Deerfield or Slackman, the Slack board is their uh, board of health. 
bottom line, right now, as of today, residents 75 and older can get the vaccination. What, we're, what the recommendation is right now is that if you are 75 or older, get a vaccine shot however you can. If, if it means, and if you're able to drive, sign up for one of the large locations down the Eastfield Mall in Springfield, East, East Springfield, try there, try UMass, um, go online. However you can get a vac vaccination, get the vaccination. Hopefully, the way it starts right now is that Franklin County has three, going to have three, maybe four dispensing sites set up. At the most, we're predicted right now that we'd only be able to get 100 shots, vaccines per site. Hmm. So it was decided that we would pull all of those shots and send them to Greenfield at the senior center in Greenfield, they would dispense those shots at that, that location. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that'll start next week, but we won't know that until Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So basically you go on the FERCOG website frcog.org. They'll have the information there. They also have a telephone number that you can call. Jeff will uh, find that number and put it on our website. It's probably already on our sure. website. Okay. I, can, I have it if you want it all. Okay. And then make sure okay. Channel 15's got it too. Yeah. Yep. We will also, the, the, we're going to be writing a reverse 911 code red message that we're going to be sending out in the four communities. So everybody, I mean, we're working, everybody, they're trying to work. Okay. We're going to send out the most up-to-date information and the, the reverse 911 call. That's, that's, and Jeff, you should be getting that from um, Chief Paturik the next few days, or you can call Casey or Brian there. All right. And you may want to review it, but they're it, it basically going to pretty much say what I said right now. Now, hopefully when we we're going to start getting on what they call the survey, it's going to ask us how many shots that we want, how many we can distribute. Once, once we have Greenfield up and running well, then we will be working with Deerfield, Whiteley, Conway, putting an EDS together that we, like we've run in the past. But it all, all depends on the vaccines. The vaccines are coming from two separate locations. One is the federal government, the other is through the state. So we're trying to work that out. But if you can call CVS, Walgreens, Eastfield Mall, UMass, call, get an appointment and go. Okay. But we will be also talking in that reverse 911 call we will be talking about people that are that will not be able to get out easily. There, there are residents that, that cannot get up. They may have had in the past allergic reactions to flu shots. So if you're 75 and above and are get and have reaction to the flu shot, the normal flu shot, they may not want the COVID shot but their caregiver, they, they may want their caregiver to get that shot. 
we'll discuss that as well about how to do that. If, if you have, and the other thing besides deferred cog, life path, but many people in town, the old, our senior centers, life path has all this information as well. And life path, if you want, life path, if you have trouble with computers, life path has offered to help schedule appointments for you as well. So there, there are there are options out there. Okay. Bottom line, if you have if you have a concern and you can't get anybody, call the town office and we'll try to help. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks for that update. That's good. <clears throat> um, do you have any other updates, Laurie? Or no. no? Okay. Oh, Jeff, anything else for COVID? The last Thursday, we we'll, were back in the green. Um, I don't think we explicitly color coded it, but it, that was the color coding for what Lori was saying about fewer people. Um, and no, I, I think just I, I do want to underscore um, what what Tom said, which is you know, there's, even if you go to the mass.gov website, one of the first things on mass.gov slash vaccine is there's a very limited supply of vaccine and we're doing our best to get it out to those people. And I know that uh, the governor is working also on a call in number um, to help people schedule their appointments as well. And as soon as we get that, we'll, we'll share that too. And I think that coming from two primary um, pharmaceutical companies right now, right? Isn't it, isn't it Moderna and Pfizer, right? And one's a two dose one and one's a single dose one? Both is are that, two dose. Both, both two dose? Okay. Johnson and Johnson that hasn't that, been approved yet. That's one okay. Dose. All right. So keep on. It sounds like they're scheduling when you get your first one. It does sound like they're scheduling the second appointment too. So keep that in mind, folks, that you'll have to follow up with a second appointment. So... All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Better news, at least. That's good. Starting to get better. Progress. That's right. Slow but dogged progress. <clears throat> All right. There was, a, there was a great line yesterday on the one of the news shows, and it happened to be the epidemiologist from Johns Hopkins. He said, listen, Americans are really good at tapping the brakes while the car wraps around the tree. <laughs> There you go. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Good point. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, with that, next we've got our select board updates. I'll go with I'll go with my left or right. I see Tom's first. So, um, we we had a uh, um, I had a Furtog regional. Council meeting last Thursday. I th I think um, our assessment is going up a little bit, but that's basically for the um, account service. the The base mm -hmm. assessment is down across the Burkhog. Okay. Uh, so so we uh, that that was um, last Thursday. Um, they're, they they are actually add they're adding a position and there was a lengthy discussion about it it was it was kind of like a communications director mm -hmm. um, someone to tie all the programs um, and get it out and get the message out to people mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I from from what the what what the FERCOC has been using, um, and, and getting it, their message out, I, I would personally, I think that's probably something that's needed. It's going to be a part-time position um, to start with, a benef benefited part-time position. And I think most, most of us, we kind of know what the FERCOG does because they've done a lot for us. But every, every once in a while, you kind of scratch your head and wonder, you know, what does the FERCOG do? Um, right. So, and, and we've had these questions in the past, right? I mean, Scott, they, I mean, but um, 
so I think it 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 probably a good a good thing. Also on the South County EMS um, with the, the start of the COVID, our run call our calls had had gone down. Um, people were hesitant to call for EMS to go to to hospitals and such. Um, but after the first couple of months of COVID, um, the numbers have have gone back up and stabilized. So we're we're I, this this past year um, we 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 just we are just under a thousand calls. I think nine hundred ninety seven. So we're we're pretty much on 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 task with that as well for for the numbers. So that looks good money wise. Good. All right. <clears throat> Scott, any updates? Yeah, actually, last week there was a village uh, center working group meeting that focused on both the scheduling and current schedules for implementation of 120 North Main, as well as the North Main Street, but also a lot of discussion centered around Mass DOT sent to us sidewalks from it would be right. the intersection of 116 and 47. And they were headed, uh, I guess it would be east toward um, Sugarloaf Frosty. And then on the side of the street, the south side of the street uh, where North Star is. And there was a lot of discussion, first of all, praise for DOT for bringing that forward right yep. off the bat. And then secondly, a lot of discussion about, well, are those sidewalks set against the road? What's the set back? You know, it's a more pleasant walking experience if the roads, if you're away from the road, as we know from North and South Maine or anybody who's walked, you know, adjacent a road on Old Amherst. It's been, you know, I have firsthand experience in each of those cases. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to send those questions in, put those in the form of questions to MassDOT and see if there's an opportunity to set them back as far as we can off of the paved ways. And it looked like by their dis initial layout that they were four-ish feet off the road to start, but we want to get confirmation on that. Yep. And they almost seem a little bit like outliers, but boy, anybody who spent time in the center of town uh, during the day, in particular the weekdays, sees a lot of that North Star traffic. And I, I give them credit for that. Um, Given the DOT credit for the, recognizing that there is pedestrian traffic right on 116, so how do we deal with it? You know, you know, Mr. Mr. Bergeron, Ms. when when North Star first went in there, that yeah. was our, that was we one raised of our, those questions. Didn't yeah, we? right. We talked about crosswalks and everything. Huge concern of ours was what, yep. and we and 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 I the the gentleman that runs the North Star said, Dow, that's not, that's not a concern because we're coming from Hadley and Route 9 intersection, Route 9 and 47. Nothing. But, uh, yeah. And it says, no, you don't have anything. Oh, that's not a problem. We, we, we kind of, uh, we address it as a concern right away. So. Right. Right. So to the extent. It only took, it only took about five years, six years. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and in, in that context, if I could, Mr. Chair, Tom, the, the reality is that whether it's pedestrian walk or whether it's, um, and, and the term was brought up, you know, is the mass dot is looking at this intersection. I think that Sunderland's, um, Sunderland's uh, pulse, if you will, on that road uh, is more than just cars and trucks. And thankfully the DOT is recognizing that element of it. Good, good, good job. <laughs> And I mean, it is it is all part of their push for the complete streets too. It's not just like you're saying; it's not just cars. It's about other modes of transport, yeah. be it biking yeah. and walking. So yeah. it kind of wraps into their own plan. So think about it, Dave. When we're both retired, living at 120 North Main, we can walk to the Frosty and get that, that crowd dog. <laughs> it's a good thing because we'll need to work it off on the walk back. You exactly know? right. <laughs> it'll be a lengthy. It'll be a lengthy walk. <laughs> Right, a few laps at least, maybe up past, up Sugarloaf and then back, you know. Jeff, did I characterize that meeting correctly? Okay. Great. All right, excellent. And I've got a personnel committee meeting tomorrow night, so we'll be back doing our 
thing there. So under selectmen's updates, if I could, Mr. Chair, one more thing. Mm. Uh, town clerk wants to make sure that everyone recognizes that it's time uh, to consider your dog license and ah, that yes. your dog's license. It's February is a great time. There is a mail component. There is a drop box component. Please check the dog, town clerk's uh, website, whether it comes to dog licenses, picked up my, our dog's tags today. You know, it is what it is. It, goes back to a little bit of that uh, public health and it's a responsible dog owner's responsibility. Keep them registered, make sure their shots are in order and it keeps everybody safe. So town clerk's website, Dropbox, mail, you know, get your dogs registered. That is a requirement. All right, thanks. I think our last item is a uh our public comment section, if we have any public comments before we close for the evening. <clears throat> I see one hand up in square number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I just wanted to mention a, a couple, I guess two happy things and one sad thing. One is that FEMA approved our hazard mitigation plan. That was sort of the last oh. step they needed to do their final sign off. So um, just getting confirmation that the plan that we have with their letter and um, the resolution that you signed a couple weeks ago, that that's all good to get posted on the website and sent out and start implementing. And it allows us to have access to uh, federal um, hazard mitigation uh, grant programs. Um, so that's exciting. Mm. Um, the second is that we've applied for a local rapid recovery grant um, as well. And that's sort of a, I guess it's a planning for recovery between now and June, um, economic recovery, but it also talks about um, zoning and planning and wayfinding and I know that the select board had talked about how do we expand outdoor dining and how do we be more flexible yeah, with some right. of these things. So I'm hoping that that that, that would be included in that. Um, and then very quickly, the last thing is just uh, recognition that today uh, is the last official day for our board of assessors, administrative assistant, um, Teresa Foster. She's worked for the town for seven years and nice. it was her last day yeah. today. So. Oh, we're going to miss you, Teresa. Greatly appreciate all your work. Yeah, this is a both point. combination, if I could, Mr. Chair, great, great reporting, kind of really data driven. And, you know, just no punches held. Things were what they were. Yep. That was I greatly appreciated. appreciated. Yep, it was. <clears throat> and actually, on that, there is an, there is uh, another anniversary. It seems our town administrator is celebrating his first year of his first three years. You know, I heard week. something about that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's still there. So that's a good sign. I think the last comment was it only felt like the first three years this year. Yeah. Especially Are with we the renegotiating the contract. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going through a tunnel. Hold on. I think I lost <laughs> you there. Was that muting? Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Also, I want to apologize, Jeff, for skipping you. Sorry about that. I was kind of sliding. There's a storm. The public yeah. comment. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure you get home safely, you know, because it is building up out there. So He's got that big battery in his car. He'll be fine yeah. until the lights <laughs> dim and the radio goes out. And he just slowly slows down and goes exactly out and right. the lights go out. <laughs> Batteries aren't affected by the temperature. Are no, no, not at all. They love the cold. Nice. <sighs> All right. Um, if there's no public comment, um, I'd like to just say folks to, uh, oh, I see the chief pop popping back on. We have a public comment. Go ahead, chief. I just want to let the board know that we also applied for another grant. Uh, it's a $1,300 grant. Last year, we got half of that uh, for the med box that we have at the public safety complex. Oh, We've had a lot of people uh, in town dropping off their unwanted medications. So we thank them for that. Uh, this grant, uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain will be approved, but if it is approved, we'll go to assisting with the, uh, 
the drug take backs that we do every year, multiple nice. times a year. Uh, and I just wanted to let the board know that. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Better than Thank flushing you. them down the toilet. Most definitely. So, yeah. So, Chief, yes. you say men's box, right? I understand the the that component. Is there a sharps component to that, or is that a separate separate stream? Hmm. Um, that box does not take sharps. We do have a sharps container on the wall. Um, we ask people that if they do have sharps to try to follow through with uh, dropping them off at different locations. Yep. Um, because the shops box is nowhere near the size of the med box that we have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and there are different places uh, throughout the area. I think Sunderland uses, I, I could be wrong, but I thought it was the Franklin County solid waste management out of Greenfield. Yeah, it's always yep. district. Uh, yep. That's correct. I think that's where they, the shops go. But um, we try to use you know the box until we get it filled and then we'll try to get it dumped. But I know a lot of people have come to us in the past with a large amount of, you know, um, used uh, needles for you know, diabetics or, or biologics or whatnot. Um, but you should be able to get your own private box uh, given to you by your PCP. Uh, if not, you can see if we, you can use ours, but the, uh, the med box is mostly for unwanted prescription meds. Okay. Yeah, want, want to just put that out there for delineation and for public consumption. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, all right. Our next um, meeting is going to be next Monday, February 8th at 6.30 p.m. And I, just before we um, ask for a motion for a German, I'd like to say props to the Kit Kat clock in uh, the background <laughs> there of select board number two. <laughs> it's all right there. <laughs> I've been enjoying that little tail wagon back and forth through the meeting. So it's sort of like yep. my meeting metronome there. You have no idea how long a C battery can last when you get a little kinetic <laughs> energy behind it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Right. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks and have a good night, folks. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>